Hey guys, another week, another game dev vlog, and this week I have released my game engine, Frost2D. It's an HTML5 game engine written in Hakes, and it's meant to be very easy to use and convenient for making stuff the way that I'm used to working from Flash. And it's also meant to not build too much upon the structures already in place in JavaScript and such. So while it does add a sprite structure and its own graphical drawing systems, it doesn't really add too many layers upon what already exists. So for example, one thing that I had been doing in the past on previous experiments was where I entered colors in by an integer like I was used to in Flash. Well, when you're doing HTML5 stuff, you use strings. Well, in order to make this version more lightweight, I moved to just using those strings. It just makes more sense, because this is ultimately going to JavaScript. I want it to work best where this is intended to go. So there was actually a lot of stuff like that, and in case you aren't aware, I was using prototype versions of Frost2D for Rotate and earlier projects like Blockworks and ChargeBot and even HakeCE at one point. So this new version is just all around a lot better, a lot more lightweight, and actually runs just a little bit better as well. Some of you may be wondering why it's using Canvas 2D rendering rather than WebGL, and I can basically explain that in the fact that I believe that WebGL and Canvas 2D rendering both have some significant strengths and weaknesses, right? So Canvas 2D rendering is great for doing easy, simple stuff, like if you want to draw a rectangle, a rounded rectangle, you want to clip stuff to a mask, you want to do basic things like that. You want to draw vector graphics. You want to do text. It's a lot easier to use the Canvas 2D drawing, and it requires a lot less infrastructure on top of what's already existing there. The parts where the Canvas 2D drawing falls apart is when you're trying to do mass operations. Like, let's say you're trying to draw a massive tile-based world, or a lot of stuff animated at the same time. Just anything that's doing a lot of stuff rendering at the same time especially stuff that's changing, that is the weakness of canvas rendering. So of course the strengths of WebGL would be that, in that it can draw lots of stuff very easily. You have much lower level control over what the computer's doing, how it's rendering, whether or not anti-aliasing is going to be done properly, because the Canvas 2D stuff can sometimes be a pain with that. I think what's the best route, and what we'll be doing with the Everybody at its reboot, is leveraging the strengths of both systems. So, using the canvas rendering for most of the foreground stuff and the user interface and everything, and then using a WebGL context in the background for the world. Now, because we'll be using both, it also means it's easy to do a fallback method so that if someone's computer doesn't support WebGL or their browser, or maybe WebGL is just slower on their system, they can swap over to the canvas renderer and it should act identical. So. It's going to give us a lot of flexibility, and it's going to make it easier to code a lot of the more interesting effects that are really simple in the Canvas stuff, and leverage the performance and control of WebGL. Now, if you're interested in checking out Frost2D for yourself, the link is down in the description below. I've got a website up. It has some example code of how it's used. There aren't like any tutorials or anything on how to get a project set up with it, and I'm probably not going to be doing any of that just yet, but it's there for anybody to look at, and maybe if they understand how that stuff works already, uh, experiment with it a little bit. It's really going to be an interesting process, and for all I know, maybe this game engine will help some of you guys out. It's basically for anybody who wants to use Hakes for HTML5 game development, but doesn't want to use some heavy system like OpenFL, or integrate with some of the other quirkier JavaScript ones, like Phaser is a pretty good engine. I've played with it a little bit in the past, but I really don't like the coding style of it, how it works. But I do understand that it's a really good option for people. But Frost2D is meant to fulfill one specific task, and it's meant to be the game engine that I want to use. And if it works best for me, that means there's probably some people out there who will like it as well. But anyway, some other work that I've been doing this week has been on the Everybody Else update that was just released. As a matter of fact, I didn't do that much work on it, I just helped with some of the final stuff. Luke has been working a lot on this update, and he's been doing pretty much all the programming stuff. And that's why I've been able to work on Frost2D all this time. I'm still going to try to have the tech demo ready by the end of the month. I don't know if that's going to happen, because Frost2D took a little longer than I expected. I expected to be working with some of the server-side stuff this week. That didn't happen. But this next week, I'm going to be getting into that and all that. So yeah, I guess it is going to have to be it for today. As always, I do want to thank my contributors over on Patreon. If you want to check out my Patreon page for yourself, the link is down in the description below. But yeah, I'll see you around. Goodbye.